stay with this as long as we keep power. Uh, if you watched us earlier this afternoon, we had a tornado just like that that came through Coleman. I would suggest this might even be larger than the Coleman tornado. I think it's much larger than that one. Uh, th this thing looks like it might be over one half mile wide, uh, maybe up to three quarters of a mile wide. Yeah. That is huge. <laughs> Oh, my God. A house hurls through the air, then explodes into fragments. It's amazing how a traditional home can look so nice in a picture, then on the news look like a cardboard box when they come into contact with high winds, floodwaters, or fire. Yet year after year, decade after decade, we throw billions and billions of dollars rebuilding these homes. I asked myself why someone doesn't just spend a few million dollars researching how to design a home that won't crumble when it dances with Mother Nature. Well, in 2010, I was making a movie called The 40-Point Plan and discovered there was actually a company that invented this type of disaster-proof home. And after I was watching news clips, I saw with my own two eyes how safe this house really is, finally realizing why so many people in more than 50 countries around the world call their homes the safest house. Mark Sigler prepares to weather the hurricane at his home on the barrier island of Pensacola Beach. Since moving to Florida in 1992, Mark has experienced the destruction wrought by five hurricanes. In 1995, his first home in the area was destroyed by Hurricane Opal. It's like Groundhog's Day. You, you build something up, the storm tears it down, you build it back. The storm tears it down, you build it back. Frustrated by the cycle of destruction, Mark designs a home that he believes will withstand a hurricane. Completed in 2003, the dome home, as it's called, is a concrete bunker, 30 times heavier than a conventional house and aerodynamically shaped. With Ivan making landfall, it is about to face its first test. Being told to leave right now, the wind Meanwhile, hurricane veteran Kerry Sanders has come to Pensacola Beach to report on the storm for NBC. The word from New York, here's this house that can withstand a hurricane. I'm like, a house that can withstand a hurricane? So we go over there and we, we mark. And so Mark said, well, um, you guys want to ride the hurricane out with us? We're on a barrier island. So it's a real roll of the dice, but we're kind of like, what do you think? Kind of look at all each other and go, okay, we'll ride it out there. So this man told us that he, you know, had built this house just for this purpose and he was going to stay in it. And um, next thing I knew, Carrie was asking, can we stay in it too? Mark, take me through the interior of your home here. Okay, uh, some of the features, we're going to go through the house and I'll show you. Concrete four, six inches thick, full of rebar, you know, extremely tough. Concrete walls have about a 12 to 14 inch wall in most places. These are impact uh, resistant doors. I mean, you really would have to hit this. You can beat on it with a sledgehammer. You're not going to knock this paint out. Ariola Drive and Avenue 12. And I'm going to go ahead and spray some of this stuff because some of these places will probably not be here tomorrow. 
by afternoon, the winds pick up to a howling 75 miles an hour. But inside the dome, the TV crew experiences a calm they never thought possible during a hurricane. This is Mark's home, Mark Siegler, thank you very much. He's decided to let NBC News stay here with him. And then about 7 o'clock, one of the newsmen, he handed me his cell phone. He said, this calls for you. He said, the storm surge at your house should top out between 20 and 25 feet. The first level on my house is 22 feet. He would tie a rope onto Kerry Saunders, and he'd go out the deck and stand on that top deck, and we'd hold on to him with the rope so he didn't blow off. It's incredible. We are actually putting ourselves in an experiment, as you might say. A home that was built here, designed specifically to withstand the forces of hurricane category five storms. It's called a dome home. You can kind of see over there a traditional home. In all likelihood by tomorrow, a good portion of that home will be gone. We can literally hear huge chunks of other houses bouncing off of this house. Now, I gotta say this is something that I never expected and that is that I'd be able to lay my head on a pillow and go to sleep as a hurricane is blowing outside. The beach houses that were built on the ground level were just gone. Roads have disappeared under the sand. Remnants of houses litter AJ's path. The entire landscape has been ravaged. It was hard to remember what it had looked like the day before and where everything had once belonged. It was just all sort of washed around and washed away. Mark Sigler's dome home survives, but his neighbor's homes have been swept out to sea. I realized at that time that it was going to take years for the beach to recover. Well, wildfires have scorched more than 400,000 acres, destroyed more than 250 homes and businesses, and caused two deaths since November 1st in Oklahoma. And a massive fire burned nearly 3,000 acres in Stevens County last Thursday. But in the middle of all that damage stands one Oklahoma woman's home untouched by fire. News Channel 6's Erica Harpel met with the homeowner today and explains why. Last Thursday's wildfire in Stevens County scorched thousands of acres of land. Sixty of those acres destroyed are Jerry Strubes. Despite flames touching her home outside of Marlowe, Oklahoma, it's still standing. If you go outside and look, the fire's right up against the dome. Jerry's home didn't catch on fire because it can't. It's a monolithic dome, a super insulated, steel reinforced concrete structure. Fire proof, tornado proof, hurricane proof, termite proof, it's everything proof. Our electric bill running the lights 24 7 was like $50. Jerry's sister, Nyla Capley, lives next door in what she called a standard country home, but it was destroyed in last week's fire. Nyla is now considering building a dome house of her own. Now that I have no house, and there's a still standing with concrete. It's like, that's what I want to do. Why not? I don't want to go through losing everything again. When we see things with our own two eyes, it's a lot easier to accept change. And I've lived in Southern California my entire life, and year after year, we see hundreds of homes on average just go up in flames. I mean, gone. Check out this 2002 fire that occurred in Yucaipa, California. News helicopters were filming this fire and noticed that there was a house on top of the mountain destined for destruction. Yet as the fire arrived, they noticed something very unusual. This home wasn't catching on fire. Why? Because it's a monolithic home. You talk about David versus Goliath. Well, guess who won? Traditional homes were not meant for this. There's more than $10 trillion worth of traditional built homes in the United States, and not one of them were designed to resist water. Superstorm Sandy was a sobering reminder of just how embryonic we still are when millions of homes from New Jersey all the way up to New York can be destroyed by one storm. Are we going to rebuild the same types of homes that will then again be destroyed each and every time this happens? Or are we going to start acting responsibly and modernize our homes during the rebuilding process? I mean, there's more than $60 billion in damages from Superstorm Sandy alone. 
Imagine if we the people rebuilt all of these homes using the monolithic design. We wouldn't have to keep wasting billions and billions of tax dollars rebuilding these homes. I mean, let's look over the last 60 years alone. More than $1 trillion was spent on rebuilding homes from every hurricane that hit the United States since 1950. I mean, there's nothing we can do about the past, but there's plenty we can do now and in the future that will not only save billions and billions of dollars annually, but it will also save thousands of lives, which is priceless. Seeing is believing. I found out that the patent for the safest house actually has a cousin and is called the Pantheon, built in Rome in 126 AD. I mean, the Pantheon is almost 2,000 years old, and look how amazing it still is. I also found out that there's only really one main difference between the Pantheon and the safest house. Uh, the safest house is designed to last even longer than the Pantheon, since it actually has access to 21st century technology. I mean, the Romans had just recently, back then, invented concrete. So the Pantheon didn't have access to state-of-the-art basalt fiber to reinforce the concrete that's 10 times stronger than steel, nor had special insulator air foam. I mean, the Pantheon was built with just a single casting of concrete in subsequent layers, which required the builders to use lighter stones at the higher levels of the dome to mix in with the concrete. So when you link the two structures side by side, we can see how the safest house can last thousands of years just like the Pantheon. For almost 2,000 years now, the Pantheon has endured more than 100 earthquakes. I mean, Italy is one of the most active fault lines in all of Europe, and the Pantheon still stands today. One of the most well-known earthquakes in Rome was in 1349, when the south end of the Colosseum was destroyed. During an earthquake, a traditional house rocks off of the foundation, causing some to topple as the earth makes lateral shifts. Now, the safest house, along with the Pantheon, is designed to have an even distribution of weight and a low center of gravity so it moves with the earth. The safest house can also be built with an added option for earthquake regions around the world. This essentially lets the home float during what's called the liquefaction process. You see these blue streaks on the screen? Well, they represent every tornado that has hit the United States in the past 56 years, causing billions and billions and billions of dollars and thousands of deaths. Do you live in one of these regions or know someone who does? Well, traditional homes and office buildings require bearing walls to hold up the roof, which a tornado turns into a flying kite or confetti within seconds of impact. So no matter how many roof clips or metal straps you use, the rooftops of traditional homes are no match for a tornado. Monolithic homes are designed with a single aerodynamic wall that is essentially locked into the earth. And this innovative design repels and deflects tornadoes, which is one of the paramount reasons why it's called the safest house. I mean, what type of home would you want to live in if a tornado arrived at your doorstep? Well, to this day, I haven't had anyone tell me they prefer to live in a traditional home during a disaster. I mean, some do have basements, but that's the point. After their house is destroyed, all they have left is their basement. So the cost per square foot just dramatically increased. The makers of the safest house also make the safest school, the safest sports arena, the safest amphitheater, 
museums, churches, commercial food cooling facilities, packing and processing plants. I mean, even cement storage containers and airplane hangars. The safest house is much more than just a home. It can be built to any size or specification. It's so sophisticated and extremely energy efficient that the Department of Defense uses the safest house design for their Brigade Tactical Operations Center at Fort Irwin, Colorado. In addition, they also use it for their National Training Center for anti-terror force protection that is 100% independent from using any of the military's power base grid. After seeing numerous photos and blueprints, I realize what really defines this home as the safest is due to its aerodynamically shaped outer shield, which happens to be bulletproof, by the way. I mean, you could fire 30 rounds into a 12-inch diameter, and it will only penetrate about halfway through the protected layer. Uh, this patented shield is really what keeps our families, friends, loved ones, you know, protected and secure from natural disasters. One of the main differences I noticed with the mid-sized to larger safest homes are the spacious and open environments inside that actually provides a freedom to create a picturesque living experience since there are no bearing walls or low ceilings to obstruct the home's unique inner atmosphere. And also, if you have an additional property on your land, you can have a safest cabin delivered to your doorstep. Uh, whether it's a guest house, studio, office, entertainment room, it's already pre-built and installed. Uh, you can even make money on it by renting it out as a uh, guest house. Uh, the makers of the safest house have more than 400 certified licensed professional contractors in North America that can build the outer shell at an average of about $59 a square foot. Now, the inside of the home is a separate entity in itself. It can be built by any local contractor. Uh, that's qualified. You know, in addition, Wells Fargo, they offer nationwide financing for residential customers along with corporate and community lending partners at safesthouse.com. Uh, simply schedule a meeting with a Safest House professional or you can go online to safesthouse.com and select a house that really meets your type of uh, dreams in one way of just having a house that you know you're going to be safe in no matter what. Um, so they have a residential online evaluator uh, that you enter the number of rooms, you calculates your desired square foot, features, options, and the amount you wish to finance. And many owners have recouped 100% of their purchase price during uh, the last 20, 30 years because they've saved 50 to 75 percent of their energy bills each and every month compared to a traditional house. So um, you also add they're saving about the same types of percentages savings on their insurance premium. So after 20, 30 years, the safest house is essentially built for free. Uh, one example is an 8,000 square foot safest church in Alaska. Their monthly average bill right now is $72 a month. And this is Alaska, okay? Um, a comparable 8,000 square foot traditional church energy bill averages about $1,000 per month. So that's more than $900 in savings each and every month. After 20 years, that's more than $250,000 in saving. I mean, there are so many additional safety features and benefits that we'll cover in the second half of the Second House documentary. Until then, feel free to contract a Safest House professional by visiting safesthouse.com. I mean, from all of us at 40 Point Productions, we want to thank you for watching part one of the Safest House. We're very grateful for considering the responsibility of the future is available now. Thank you.